In this video, I'm going to be sharing my impressions after playing the Soul Frame Alpha, a fantasy co-op hybrid MMORPG that is shaping up to be the next big game from Digital Extremes, the creators of Warframe, one of the most continuously popular games in modern gaming history. Put it into perspective for those who aren't familiar, Warframe has managed to retain around 50 to 100,000 concurrent players over the course of six years on Steam alone, which rivals the likes of Monster Hunter World and Final Fantasy XIV. Warframe's enduring success is in no small measure due to its focus on remaining a consumer-friendly free-to-play game, while also providing an immense amount of content and continuous support for its very unique playstyle. Needless to say, Soulframe has huge shoes to fill, and it looks like Digital Extremes are yet again trying to create something genuinely different in the gaming sphere and deliver a fresh experience just like they did with Warframe over a decade ago. Around a year ago, we did a preview video showcasing news and content about the game from dev streams and trailers, and the general gist of the game I got back then was that it's a fantasy version of Warframe with slower and more strategic gameplay. Now, having played a very early pre-alpha version of the game, I can say that view has changed, so in this video, I'm going to be breaking down my thoughts and impressions based on my hands-on experience with this. Soulframe takes place in the fantasy world of Madrath, a realm of men, beasts, magic, and divine entities. This is a world in conflict between its natural state and its corruption as the Kingdom of Ode has entered into a war against nature and its divine entities, the Omen Beasts. You play as the Envoy, someone who was once part of the Kingdom but was banished to the Isle of Madrath, and now you fight against the Kingdom with the power of the Omen Beasts. Fans of Warframe know that the game's rich setting and lore are an integral part of the enjoyment. Much like the Souls games, this aspect has inspired content creators and fans to delve deep and produce extensive compilations and explanations tying together everything that has happened and that is added. Soulframe is thus expected to follow suit with a rich and fulfilling universe that is revealed to you as you explore. The alpha sets the pace for a long burn with very limited exposition, giving you only bits and pieces via your codex or in item descriptions. I was quite surprised at how sparse this was since the developer streams and trailers we've seen so far had a lot of focus on lore, so I was expecting it to be more of a primary aspect, but instead I found I had to go looking for developer notes and the official website, and got the distinct impression that I have to go further into the game to gain a better understanding of the story. Obscure storytelling is a feature or a pain depending on your stance, but for me it's part of an interactive puzzle that I quite enjoy to put together as it reveals insignificant but meaningful points for developer choice. For example, the three stars orbiting the planet that signify courage, grace, and spirit are also the three main stats of the game. Or the mendicants, an enemy faction, are the result of the Ode corruption gaining a form of sentience and corrupting old beings. As a longtime Warframe player, the best way I could describe the overall feeling I got from the game's setting was kind of like the Plains of Eidolon, a tribal and sci-fi mesh of concepts and genres that excels in immersing you into a unique world. That uniqueness and mold-breaking of stories, genres, and tropes is quite welcome in my gaming, and it actually carries into the more important part, the gameplay. As this is a very early alpha of Soulframe, the overall gameplay loop is expectedly undercooked, but there are plenty of elements in the game that already intrigue me. The basic gist of Soulframe is that it's a PvE co-op ARPG with some MMO elements, much like its sister game Warframe. The game can be a completely single-player experience or multiplayer one, and you'll explore locations to advance the main story and get stronger over time with new equipment and tools. So far, character creation is not a part of the alpha and you make a simple gender selection, but I expect there will be further customization as this is an important aspect of roleplay. Your character won't have traditional stats or classes, however, and you will instead pick one of two available pacts, Fey or Ode, that act somewhat as your class or Warframe by granting you three unique abilities and extra three points into a virtue of your choice. Virtues are the three main stats of Soulframe, Courage, Grace, and Spirit, and the three unique abilities for each pact correspond to one of the virtues. So far I haven't seen any traditional stats like stamina or equip load, so virtues seem to be focused on enhancing those abilities as well as your weapon damage, since different weapons can be attuned to different virtues. Both your packs and your virtues are interchangeable whenever you want at no cost, so build swaps won't be rigid like in traditional RPGs or Souls games, but instead will be more flexible similar to Warframe. With no weight or defense stats present so far, the armor you choose seems to be purely cosmetic, giving you a significant amount of freedom on how you can look. It's possible that this will change as the game develops, as they have the opportunity to introduce armor bonuses, faction boosts, etc. But right now, as of the alpha, it's just there for fashion. For armaments, there are currently five different weapon categories to choose from, short blades, long blades, pull arms, shields, and bows. 
Most weapons in each category seem to be attuned with a single virtue, like the long blades and courage, but each category has at least one weapon that deviates and attunes with another virtue. The Alpha doesn't have a huge amount of weapons to pick from, which is expected as they're still working on feedback and systems, but they have already added the bonding feature. Using weapons and packs levels up your bond with them, granting you points to invest in their respective skill trees to unlock combat arts. These are special moves of each weapon category that enhance your combat, and since they've made it easily refundable, you can be very flexible to allow you to find your preferred playstyle. Now as I move into combat, I must stress that it's actually much better than I expected. With no lock-on and the somewhat floaty animations, I thought it was going to feel very clunky, but I found myself enjoying it thanks to the ranged options you get in your kit. While you can do the basic light and charged attack, what's really fun is chucking your sword 50 yards into an enemy's head 5 times, turning them into stone for 20 seconds, summoning annoying birds to nibble their ears, or exploding them with a super bow that can one-shot enemies in specific circumstances. The combat arts feel quite unique and varied, and kept me trying out new things. One of the great things is that there is no stamina or mana bar, just cooldowns on abilities, so you can keep going even after rolling a bunch to avoid enemy attacks, which feels great. The challenge is a little bit limited as a result, and I can't tell if this is intended or not, but given how Warframe isn't exactly a difficult game, I think this is what they are going for. In general, the combat feels quite fluid but not as fast as Warframe's, and it felt a lot more explorative than challenging at this stage. An aspect of note is that death has no repercussions, so boss fights don't get very tense or stressful. Of course, this is an early alpha and the devs are looking for feedback, so it may be entirely different by the time the game comes out. Your exploration in Soul Frame is guided by the main quest that focuses on finding ancestors to bring them back to the Envoy's base, the Nightfold. Here the different ancestors you find will provide you unique services such as a codex for lore entries, a workshop, or an upgrade station. You can jump into the Nightfold whenever you want, and this is where you'll be able to use the rewards you get from chests and items, as well as tinker with your build. The main location for the Alpha is the Northern Isle of Midrath, where the Envoy washes up after their exile. In this Alpha, you only get a small glimpse of the full island, but in its entirety, it is a vast forest that branches out into procedurally generated dungeons and cool structures, like an abandoned blacksmith, a whole village with their own houses and farmland, or a full-blown castle. There's even some special landmarks like a corrupted deer boss spawning from a gooey part of the ground in the east. I found that these areas are interesting to find and explore since they feel like random bits of civilization scattered throughout the world and it piqued my interest and curiosity about the universe and lore. The fidelity and overall look of the game is beautiful, so when you see a small bridge going over a stream, it stands out a lot from the natural foliage and generally intrigues me to investigate around the area to uncover any secrets. Unfortunately though, that interest is short-lived since there really isn't much to do other than kill a few enemies at these locations and loot some chests. This is most likely because we're trying out such an early version of the game and I'm sure they can think of more to add to these locations in the future. I do hope they get fleshed out to give you that satisfying feel of discovery and loot rewards that we're all looking for. Right now, the real gameplay of Soul Frame lies within the dungeons with random procedurally generated rooms and pathways leading to new areas every time you explore. Forget about Warframe's parkour large, busy rooms, Soulframe's dungeons feel a lot more distinctly human-made, something perhaps similar to Remnant 2, featuring grandiose or labyrinth-like and complex ruins to investigate. These areas are usually home to a few super rare chests, the secret runes that reveal the location name, and a boss that drops some unique items. Not all is great right now in terms of exploration flow, however. The map is contextual and only populates points of interest or quest when you're near them, so you don't get a lot of markers that tell you exactly where to go. There is a strange mechanic which leads you directly to where the main quest wants you to go, but it will only work when you find the next stage of the main quest out in the wild. I feel like the game wants you to explore, but at the same time doesn't want the player to feel too lost, and the solution was to add this bird that guides you to the next point. Unfortunately, what ends up happening is that you blindly follow this bird and still get lost for around 30 minutes because it requires some obscure trigger, find the next quest step, follow the bird, and repeat. Without map markers or clear indication of what to do, I got lost on the hidden but required find the blacksmith step and felt like I wandered aimlessly for ages thinking I had maybe finished the alpha when I actually hadn't. I feel like games usually end up going one way or the other when it comes to exploration. Elden Ring has no markers but uses very clever world design to hint at where the next big thing is going to be, and games like Skyrim have markers for every quest. However, people do end up complaining about this either way, so this middle ground could have potential to appeal to more people if it's properly implemented, and it certainly needs some more work. Another important part of RPGs is your character progression, which is mainly done via upgrades and crafting. In order to begin crafting, you need to first find the blacksmith who is hidden from the player until you discover a helmet in the east part of the world, which will trigger a quest. Once you do, she basically functions like the foundry from Warframe. 
You bring her some special weapon or armor fragments you find in the wild along with some materials and she makes the weapon in a set amount of time like 4 hours. When you craft, you can also add special material called a joinery to upgrade the outcome of the weapon by increasing its attack damage by a few points. The Alpha doesn't have a huge variety of weapons or armor to unlock, but it does look like this system will be integral to the game as it's the main motivator for doing content. Given how Warframe grew its selection to such incredible numbers, I expect there will be a big variety of weapons and armors to unlock and craft, making this a crucial system to Soulframe. It's also possible that different smiths or factions may have different options, and if they go deeper into RPG elements like faction reputation, they could explore that sort of unlocks as well. My main ask for this will probably be to get the kind of variety in weapon styles that we enjoyed in Warframe. There is one more ancestor who can tune your gear, who you find in a dungeon on the main quest. He specializes in equipping motes, which are words that give you a special effect when equipped, not unlike a talisman in Elden Ring. You can put up to three motes on your weapon if it's high enough rarity, and another three on your pack if it's up to level 30. Some motes will just give you plus two grace or plus three damage whereas other modes can be more specific, such as plus 20 perfect throw damage or plus 5% smite chance. These seem to be where most of the build options would be right now since you get six of these slots, and given a bigger range of unique modes, I can definitely see myself tinkering with builds in the future if they can fully flesh out this system. Final thoughts. So overall, what are my impressions of Soul Frame so far? While most alphas are not 100% feature complete and changes usually occur after they are published, they typically give you a somewhat clear vision for the titles they represent. Soulframe doesn't exactly do this. While the experience Digital Extremes has honed in Warframe clearly shines through in Soulframe, such as in the lore and setting, they still need to refine the areas where they have less experience, such as the floaty feeling of melee combat and how much direction they give to the player when exploring the world. The basic gameplay loop also needs to be expanded upon from just walking around and killing things and getting gear, which I'm sure will happen in future updates, I'm just not exactly sure what will be added. Even though the vision might not be perfectly clear for Soulframe yet, the foundations of its combat systems, crafting lore and graphics are great already, so I'm still excited to see how it's going to turn out and will definitely keep this one on my radar. Digital Extremes has been very transparent that they are seeking feedback and looking to see what their community thinks before making changes to Soulframe, so they are aware that they need to make some changes and want their fans to be part of it, which usually leads to better games in general in my opinion. <coughs> Baldur's Gate 3. I have a feeling that the beta will give us a much better idea of what to expect, so I hope to see that in the near future. So what do you guys think of Soulframe and its gameplay so far, having seen and heard what I said in the video? Did you get to play the alpha? Let me know what you think of that if you did. Are you worried about anything at all? Are you excited? Do you think the game needs more direction? Let me know what you'd like to see about Soulframe in the comments below.